Okay, let's talk about lipids. Lipids are made out of very similar things as carbohydrates. They're made out of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, just like the carbs. However, there is a group of lipids that also has phosphorus. We commonly call lipids fats, as you know, and one of the main characteristics that all fats have, no matter which fat it is, is that it is hydrophobic. That means it fears water. And you know this, when you put oil into water, they do not mix. They will eventually settle out, and that's because the oil inside of there is a lipid, which is hydrophobic. It's trying to get away from the water. Different lipids have different functions. So lipids are another way that we store our energy. It could also provide insulation and regulate our heat. It makes up cell membranes and other membranes in the body. And it also acts as hormones with cell messengers. There's three major groups that I'm going to talk about today. There's triglycerides, phospholipids, and steroids. There are also a group called the waxes, which I'm not going to talk about. But these are the three that you're going to find inside the human body. So let's look at triglycerides. Triglyceride, the word tri means three. Glycerol is because it's made out of a compound called glycerol. So there's triglyceride. Um, main function is for energy storage and protection and insulation. Here's the main structure of a triglyceride. It has a glycerol on one side. That's in the green. And then it has the tri part is for the fatty acids. It has three fatty acids. A fatty acid is simply a long chain of hydrogens and carbons, pretty much. And it also has a carboxyl end over here. But this fatty acid is going to be connected to the glycerol at these three points through dehydration to form this triglyceride. So tri, three fatty acids, glyceride refers to the glycerol. This is the main type of fat inside the body. So most of the fat that we talk about, whether it's good fat or bad fat, or the fat that you know, makes you fat or skinny, it's the triglycerides that we're actually looking at. This is a simplified version of what a triglyceride looks like without all the chemicals that make it up. The second type of lipid is called a phospholipid. This is the sometimes P, you know, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and sometimes P. This is the one that has a phosphorus and the only fat that has phosphorus. This main is, this main this lipid's main function is to form all membranes or cell membranes inside the body. And that does so by making something called a phospholipid bilayer. Phospholipids are different from triglycerides. They're very similar because they have fatty acids, but instead of three fatty acids, there's only two fatty acids. So two fatty acids right here. So in the gray, one, two. And then instead of the third fatty acid, there's some sort of group that contains a phosphorus. So this is what we call a phosphate group. And this phosphate group gives it a unique property that it can make this bilayer or two layers of phospholipids when they come into contact with each other. And so this part, this polar head or this phosphate head loves water, but the fatty acid tails hate water. So where there's no water, the tails will go and where there's water, the heads will be located. And because there's water on the inside and the outside of a cell, that's why the phospholipid membrane orients the phospholipids in that direction. And phospholipids are important because they control what goes in and out of cells. So here's a you know, quick overview of the two. Triglycerides has a glycerol and three fatty acids, whereas phospholipids has the glycerol with two fatty acids and a phosphate group in, as a replacement instead of the other one. Now, fatty acids can be categorized based on their saturation of hydrogen. The first one is called a saturated fat. And saturated means if you're saturated, you're full of something. So here's your fatty acid. Notice it's full. What is it full of? It's full of hydrogen. There's no possible extra spaces where you could put a hydrogen on these carbons. So it is saturated with hydrogens or full of it. Because it's full of it, it gives it a um, solid structure at room temperature. It gives it this straight structure, which means it has a very nice packing ability. And things that pack well together are solid at room temperature. And all these, again, saturated, there's, these are all single bonds. There's no double bonds between the carbons at all. This one does not count because it's between an oxygen, not two carbons. So all single bonds, and it forms that straight chain that could pack well and be solid at room temperature. The second type of fatty acid can be unsaturated. We call these oils because they are liquid at room temperature. What makes them liquid is that they have these double bonds that makes them kink or bend. Anytime that there's a double bond, that there's more room for hydrogen. So it's not filled or not saturated with hydrogen. I could fit a few more in there if I really wanted to. 
when this double bond between the two carbons happens, it causes the structure to bend or kink in one direction instead of being straight. When it bends and kinks, the things don't pack together as nicely, which means it cannot form solids at room temperature, so it will be liquid. That's why we call them oils. And so here's a saturated triglyceride. Here's a monounsaturated triglyceride. Mono means one, so there's only one. And if you have more than one, double bonds, you will be polyunsaturated. This one is the healthiest. The more bends that you have in the structure, the healthier it is for your body to break down and use as for whatever it needs to be used as. The next thing I want to talk about is hydrogenation. And one thing about hydrogenation is that you have to be really careful with this and trans fat. Hydrogenation is what companies do to make their food sit longer on the shelf and so they can make more money without having a lot of waste. The process is actually bad health-wise because it forms something really bad called a trans fat. So trans fat, bad. This is what a trans fat means. Trans fat, we have to talk about unsaturated, so here's a double bond that's unsaturated that causes the structure to bend. Now, this makes it an oil at room temperature, but if you want things to last longer, you could hydrogenate them. If you hydrogenate something, you fill in the extra spots by breaking the double bond and filling, saturating it with hydrogen. So hydrogenation makes more hydrogen in the chemical structure, and that will give it a straight structure that's able to pack. We call that fully hydrogenation, full hydrogenation. If something is partially hydrogenated, which a lot of foods are, they will start they will start the process, but they will stop it before it becomes solid. So it will be this kind of semi-liquid, semi-solid state. We call it partial hydrogenation. Partial hydrogenation creates trans fats. Trans means across. Things of, think of transcontinental. So trans means across. Trans means that the hydrogens are opposite or across from each other in that structure. If they are on the same side, we call it cis. So here's cis. This is a cis fat, which is healthy, and this is a fat that you want to have in your body. The hydrogens are on the same side. Cis means same. But trans fat, the hydrogens are on opposite sides instead. This, why is that bad? Because it make, gives it a straight structure. Notice how this is very bent, and this is very straight. So trans mimics saturation, and it has more bonds in it because that double bond is still there so it's even harder for your body to break down. You have to be careful when you look at nutrition fact labels because companies can claim, again, everybody knows that they have to claim trans fat now on these labels. And they'll be like, yay, we have no trans fat, eat our food. But if you actually turn it over and look at the label, they, they could say that they have the zero grams of trans fat if they have less than a half of gram. So, if you have a half a gram or less in a serving size, they could say, oh, we don't have any at all. So you can manipulate numbers, right? Because if you have um, a serving size over here, five croutons is a serving size. Who eats only five croutons? I don't know. But you could reduce or increase the amount of serving size to make the numbers say whatever you want. And so you have to be really careful. And how do you tell if there's really trans fat, even if they claim that there's none? Look at the ingredients. If it says anything about partial hydrogenation or any word that includes hydrogenation, they are lying if they say no trans fat. Because if you eat two servings or three servings or four servings of it, you are actually consuming trans fat. So look for the word partially hydrogenated or fully hydrogenated, and that will really tell you whether or not there is trans fat. The next type of lipid I want to talk about are steroids. Now, most of the time, people think of steroids. When people think of steroids, they think of this. People taking steroids to increase their muscle mass. However, we're not going to worry about that. Steroids come in different shapes and forms, too. We're not just talking about taking testosterone to build muscle mass. Cholesterol is actually the major hormone inside of your body that all these other ones are built upon. The main thing about steroids is that they don't have fatty acids. They do have a carbon-hydrogen ring structure. So here's the four ring structure that they're all made of. No t tails, fatty acids coming off the end. So cortisol, um, testosterone, estradiol, notice a four ring structure in each of them. The main one is cholesterol. And so I want to talk about cholesterol since all other <clears throat> hormones are built upon this one. 
cholesterol is, has a couple different functions. It's found in cell membranes, and when it's found in cell membranes, you can see the phospholipids, it actually keeps a cell membrane at the, at the right fluidity level. That means it needs to have a certain movement. Cholesterol kind of spaces the phospholipids how they're supposed to be. So if it gets too hot and they start to move away from each other, cholesterol will keep them closer together. And if it gets real cold and they start the phospholipids start to move together, cholesterol will space them so they don't cram each other. So it keeps the, phos the cell membrane at the right fluidity or consistency. So every single one of your cells has cholesterol in it. You need cholesterol in your body. Your liver actually makes cholesterol as well. Here's the structure of cholesterol. There's a four ring structure and then we have some um, you know, chemical structures coming off the side that makes it unique. The second thing is it's a steroid hormone. It makes steroid hormones like testosterone and estrogen as well. Second thing about cholesterol is that it needs to be transported to all your cells, but it's a fat and your blood is mostly water. And we know that water and fat don't mix. So how does it get to all your cells? Where we have these little taxi cabs in our blood called lipoproteins. So they're special molecules that actually carry cholesterol and fat to the cells. And they do that, um, there's actually two types of lipoproteins. People usually confuse this with different types of cholesterol, but there's only one type of cholesterol. There's different types of lipoproteins that carry the cholesterol. There's good and bad. And the we have one type called LDL, which is called low density lipoproteins, and the other type is called HDL, which is high density lipoproteins. And so we know those as good and bad cholesterol. And we're gonna talk about why each one of those are good or bad. First, let's talk about what a lipoprotein does. Lipoprotein is pretty much a spherical um, glob of phospholipids, cholesterol, fat, and some protein. And what happens is it that you can see the yellow cholesterol inside of it and the phospholipids, and it will carry all the fats to where they need to go. So if it is a low density lipoprotein, low density means well, fat floats, so fat has a low density. If this lipoprotein has more fat than protein, it has a low density, and we don't want more fat than protein, that's bad, so this is the one that actually promotes cholesterol buildup and could cause heart attacks and arthiosclerosis. We do want our good cholesterol, which is HDL. HDL stands for high density. Protein has a higher density. Again, people who are really muscular don't swim very well because their muscle doesn't float. So this high density means that there's more protein in this lipoprotein than fat, and that's what we want because it, preve it actually prevents cholesterol buildup in the arteries, and it helps recycle it to where it helps recycle it throughout the body as well. Here's arthiosclerosis. You can see that LDL cholesterol will promote, it'll start sticking to the sides of the arteries and start building up and prevent and pot potentially um, build up plaque and block the artery causing a heart attack or a stroke. So please remember that uh, this is a cute little comic that shows you, you know, HDL is good and LDL is the bad cholesterol that you do not want.